how Greta Gerwig's Lady Bird came to look like a memory. Lady Bird is Greta Gerwig's love letter to Sacramento, the central California city where she, like her title character, played by Sowers Ronan, spent her restless teenage years in an all-girls Catholic school. Given her deep attachment to the story, which she wrote and directed, Gerwig gave her creative team troves of personal yearbooks, photos, and journals, and led them on a tour of Sacramento, which included a walkthrough of her childhood home. She also referred her collaborators to specific works of art, including Joan Didion passages, Gregory Condos and Wayne Theboard paintings, and Lise Sarfati portraits, so that they could help her realize the distinct aesthetic she had been envisioning. As Lady Bird's director of photography Sam Levy remembers it, Jerwig hoped that the film would look like a memory. Ahead, Levy, along with Lady Bird production designer Chris Jones and costume designer April Napier, reveal the references that informed the aesthetic in Jerwig's deeply personal Lady Bird. Lady Bird is such an extraordinary character, because she's not bound by any era, she's the thrift store, punk rock shopper, said Napier. I did the same thing myself, when I was her age, trying to establish my own identity. She was influenced by the 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, whatever appeals to her. A few pieces are contemporary of 2002, but she has the ability, because of her identity and her individuality, to pull from anything that appeals to her, a little bit like a magpie. Before starting the film, I looked through a bunch of catalogs, like Delia's, and watched movies from the era, like Bring It On, Empire Records, 10 Things I Hate About You. And I watched Kids, because Lady Bird was more like Chloe Savigny's character, or Kathleen Hanna or Patti Smith to me. Greta gave us a giant box of photos from her high school years, and then she gave us her yearbooks and her journals, said Napier. It was like a treasure trove, someone handing you the era in a time capsule, which helped for the general feel of the whole film. Greta had always referred to Sacramento as the Midwest of California, so even though it's 2002, it's really, stylistically speaking, 1999, because it's not a fashion-forward city like Los Angeles or San Francisco. It's still kind of rural. Jerwig and Levy spent many conversations figuring out how to make the film look like a memory without using gimmick Y sepia tones or blurred edges. Coincidentally, a happy accident occurred one day as Levy was printing out photos of Sacramento for inspiration to hang around the production office. I took a photo that that already was printed out, I Xerox said it, and it emerged from the machine. Having lost a generation of image quality and a little bit distressed, said Levy. I didn't really think about it too much. Then Greta came back from a casting session, stood there in the doorway, and picked it out, saying that's amazing. Why is that different? I explained with Xerox machine and she said, that's great. Dot dot the early 2000s were so the time of Kinko's, and we would go there to Xerox books, and I'd decorate my room and make zines. From there, we were able to figure out the technical aspect of this aesthetic of memory she wanted, and I had a specific direction to focus my tests. I showed these reference images to everybody, to our gaffers, to our colorists, to our camera crew, and we just tried to make it a family affair, so we could all work towards executing and realizing this aesthetic of memory. Production designer Chris Jones explained how he incorporated the blue of Sacramento's rivers into the film's color palette, choosing a brilliant blue house in the fashionable 40s neighborhood as the home that Lady Bird covets on her walks home, which ends up belonging to the grandmother of her boyfriend, Danny. We wanted the images and photography to be plain and luscious, added Levy. If you've ever talked to Greta, it's such a Greta Gerwig thing to say, brilliant but very straightforward. I know exactly what that means too, because I start from a place of wanting things to look rich and dynamic and engaging, but not distracting. I want to take care of the viewer, but not have, particularly for something like Lady Bird, the viewer to be distracted by the images. I want people to watch it and just not think about the technicalities involved because they are totally absorbed in the story.
Napier explained that she sourced most of her costume finds from thrift stores, flea markets, Etsy, and, on the